course, it's important to remember how this started. Uh, we lost a young man, Michael Brown, in uh, heartbreaking and tragic circumstances. He was 18 years old. Uh, his family will never hold uh, Michael in their arms again. And when something like this happens, uh, the local authorities, including the police, have a responsibility to be open and transparent about how they are investigating that death and how they are protecting the people in their communities. There is never an excuse for violence against police or for those who would use this tragedy as a cover for vandalism or looting. There's also no excuse for police to use excessive force against peaceful protests or to throw protesters in jail for lawfully exercising their First Amendment rights. And here in the United States of America, police should not be bullying or arresting journalists who are just trying to do their jobs. All right, folks, uh, welcome back. Uh, joining us now is Ed Morrissey, a featured columnist and senior editor on HotAir.com and columnist for the week. Hello, Ed. Hello, how are you doing, sir? I I'm doing well, thank you. So does the president now, in the wake of what we've learned today about Michael Brown and the robbery and the pictures of the robbery, um, you know, and we don't know a lot more about the, the timeline of how the, uh, uh, you know, the shooting went down and the struggle and, you know, the officer with the, you know, getting uh, his face uh, uh, punched to the point where he went to the hospital. Does the president look uh, foolish? No, actually, I think he had a pretty measured response yesterday. I think that he, he tried to put this one down the middle, and I think he largely succeeded. Uh, I think that, uh, first off, we don't know really still what happened with the shooting. We know that Brown was a suspect in the um, strong-arm robbery that preceded it, uh, but we don't know how many shots were fired. We don't know what the distance was. We don't know uh, what the circumstances were because the Ferguson police have not re have not released the report from the shooting, only the report from the robbery, and, which mentions the fact that Brown was uh, shot because the police that were the police officer investigating the robbery uh, confirmed at the scene that Brown was a suspect from the video. So, I, I mean, I still think that there's a lot of unanswered questions here, including why Ferguson waited six days uh, to release the fact that Brown was actually a suspect in a robbery, which I think would have served them a little bit better had they released that from the very first day that this became an issue. All right. So, the, well, uh, you know, uh, as far, I think they, were, they mentioned there were four to six shots, if I'm not mistaken, um, but they really didn't give any details. You're right about that. And, uh, you know, we don't know. Uh, we don't know, uh, but it does fly in the face of some witness reports that, uh, you know, he was just well, uh, sure. running I mean, away with his hands in the air, you know, saying, don't, and then turn around, don't shoot, don't shoot. Uh, it, 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 it just, uh, you know, it, and plus, w the key eyewitness that we've heard from on television is apparently the other suspect in the robbery. It's, it's the accomplice, right. That's what I was about to say is that, yeah, some of the witness testimony that has been driving the narrative up to this point was from uh, uh, the other suspect, Johnson. Who was um, who was identified as the other person on the tape from the from the robbery? So certainly, I mean, there's a lot of things that still have to be nailed down. But again, the shooting itself is is a is a separate incident from the robbery. It's it's connected, but it's separate, and we don't know we don't know for sure uh, for sure how many shots were fired and whether or not the use of force was actually justified. Uh, use of lethal force, I should say, was was uh, justified based on the distance he was from the officer, based on what the circumstances were. All of that's going to be investigated by right. probably right. The, the Missouri State Police right. and the uh, and the Department of Justice. Right. But all of a sudden, so, this becomes a lot. To me, it, this this these circumstances now make it much less of a national issue uh, where the president of the United States needed to weigh in and say, you know, they'll never hug their son again. I mean, it, again, it's not like he was walking in the street and shot down in cold blood for no reason. He was involved in a robbery and was a suspect, fit the description, was involved in that kind of pursuit and confrontation. And, uh, you know, uh, that happens every day. Uh, so I, I just think that uh, maybe the president was premature. Uh, well, unfortunately, it does happen every day. Uh, the, 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 the and I mean, it's legitimate, reforms. and it's found to be yeah. legitimate, is what I'm right. saying. Yeah. So right, uh, right. No, I, I totally yeah. agree with you on that. But I think, I think when you're looking at the competing um, interests that were involved uh, in the statement yesterday, I think he did try to play it down the middle. I thought he did a pretty good job of doing that. I complimented uh, I, him yesterday too. I said he, he yeah. backtracked from the police acted stupidly at Cambridge, and yes. backtracked from he, you know, he would have looked. I, if I had a son, it would have looked like Trayvon. Right, exactly. I mean, I think he learned from those two incidents. And what he did was he put out a, a, a message that was designed to calm everybody down a bit. 
And, and I think fortunately uh, that's been the case. I still think that there's a plenty that we have to have to learn about what happened in Ferguson right. though. Yeah, so, absolutely. I agree. Open with you. minds, open minds. I, I agree think. with you. All right, let's go. Let's go to um, uh, you know what's going on in, in Iraq. When you hear the Vatican call for military action, uh, in a sense, uh, against ISIS, they realize what's going on. They understand the magnitude. Uh, they understand, as as Ralph Peters described them yesterday, and I'm paraphrasing here, uh, a bloodthirsty cult. Uh, you know, I, I, I it, it, but our president yesterday when he spoke again talked about. You know, the, the humanitarian thing is almost over, and if they come near our embassy, we're going to strike. But nothing about getting rid of this, this, this group that beheads Christian children and minority children. Uh, nothing about eradicating them. I think it was really interesting. It's a really interesting moment, too, because I think, as everybody knows, the, the Vatican was very opposed to the previous two interventions in Iraq by the United States, the one in 1991 uh, with George H.W. Bush, and very clearly the 2003 invasion. John Paul II uh, opposed both of those, uh, the second one more strongly. And so to have uh, Pope Francis, who is definitely uh, of the same mold as John Paul II and, and Benedict XVI, saying, you know, or at least his his uh, the the folks in the Vatican saying, well, look, you know, maybe military action at this point is necessary to protect these people. That is a big moment, and it does leave a lot of room for um, for the West to react. I think at least a lot of a lot of moral room yeah. for them to react. And you see that I think in the EU, the EU has decided this uh, earlier today that they're going to send arms to the Kurds directly to the Kurds, which was something that they had been uh, struggling with. We still haven't really. I was going to say, uh, I wish we step that. up. Yeah, I wish we. I mean, we're doing up. it through the CIA, but not in the in, in the quantities I think that are going to be sufficient to arm the Kurds to fight ISIS. And so it's yeah, I, I think that we're not necessarily leading uh, consistently. On this, and I think his statement yesterday about well, the siege is the siege was broken by right, uh, right. by American airstrikes. I, I mean, that's demonstrably not true. And you have McClatchy today saying that it's demonstrably I know. not true. Ed, Ed, and it goes on, and, and you have a great piece at HotAir.com about the uh, the Vatican's position. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Ed Morrissey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, editor, uh, senior editor at HotAir.com. Hey, before we go, I want you to vote at our poll. Go to Newsmax.com/polls. Should we educate? the uh, children of illegals uh, who are here, or deport them. We're coming back.